We are back. The Breakdown Boys, Wade Sensei. Oops. I'll turn my light up. It's a little, a little dim in here. Um, Sensei. Right up. Yes. Today, what's popping? You know what's popping is, well, popping, flapping, whatever you want to say. The gums of... Whoa. Whoa. This is not a good transition. The gums of sports commentators <laughs> that know nothing about the, the sport of mixed martial arts. That's what's popping today. Stephen A? You're talking about Stephen A. Smith? I am talking about Stephen A. in some respect, but also just the, the, the entirety of sports commentary in general. It yeah. baffles me how much of a disconnect there is between MMA and the rest of sports. Yeah. You it's know? newer, dude. It's, it's a baby of a sport, you know? I get it, it's but newer. it's like there's, even from the MMA side to other sports, it's like, like Joe Rogan has no idea about any other sports. I know. Right? Understandably, like, like he doesn't watch it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, no. But it's like asking. Now nah, you know what? That's not fair. He watches boxing. He's a big boxing guy. But non-combat sports. But not combat sports. But that's the the, the the difference between the two sports is always is always just baffled me a little bit that no, there's no crossover almost at all. And today I want to talk yeah. to you about what I saw on uh, on the internet on the World Wide Web to further illustrate. Uh, what I mean about what I just said about how mainstream combat or excuse me, mainstream sports commentators really don't know anything about MMA and it's frustrating to me. And I think there's a bigger conversation that needs to be had, starting with mm. our guy, man. This is our dude. Damn, you can talk about Ankh right now. I have to. Oh. Damn. Club Shay Shay in the building, Shea aka Sharp. He did oh, no Shannon Shea. Sharp, one of the best tight ends to ever play in the NFL. A great and now one of the best comments, like football commentators. I would say one he's a great. I would say he's a great sports personality. He's yeah, a so very very good say, yeah, like, sports like, personality. Great sports, not like commentator. By the way, as he sits sport. here, he did an interview today with um, Francis Ngannou. He Man, sits here, jacked. dude. He sits here, looks as big as Francis. Low key bigger, bro. <laughs> it's crazy, right? And Shannon's like, how old now? Probably in his forties. I think he's in his fifties. Probably late forties, fifties. That's what I'm thinking. Like late forties, yeah, fifties, yeah. Huge yeah. wow. son. Genetics. Give me what he's on, bro. Genetics. <laughs> there is some of that, but give me some of that lab testing as well. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on now. You mean now? If the Rock looks like he does it in his fifties, that's genetic and also synthetic, son. <laughs> anyway, let's oh, hear man. Shannon Sharp speak to. The rightful, some would say, heavyweight champion of the world, a man that never lost his belt in the UFC, and again, arguably, and maybe inarguably at this point, the baddest man on the planet, Francis Ngannou. Baddest man on the planet. Let's let's hear Shannon tell uh, Francis what MMA is all about here. The one thing about MMA, you can't be one-dimensional. Ronda oh. Rousey was one-dimensional. Uh. Conor McGregor's <laughs> one-dimensional. Really? Yeah, he just throw punches. He has oh, good no. Oh. This is, oh, dog. This. He started, I'm not going to lie. He started out, well, he started out crazy doing the knee tap. Let me, yeah, like, let, me, let me tell you. Hold on a second, big fella. Let me explain this to you now. <laughs> like, he says, you what can't a, be one. Now, he was right you, about Ronda. He was right about Ronda, but he's also, was correct. in some cases, wrong about being one dimensional as well. There have been dominant one dimensional right. fighters. Right. But, like, the as Ronda whole, case, I was with it. I was like, okay. Okay, Ronda, we with that. And then he that. says, Connor. I'm like, bro. But here's another thing, too. <laughs> then he doubles down and says, he just throw punches. He just throw punches. Now, oh, man. here's the thing, too, though. Again, to just to push <laughs> back a little bit. If Ronda had been concentrated in her one-dimensionality, she probably would have held that belt a little longer. <laughs> Facts. If she was more one-dimensional. If she was more one-dimensional, she probably holds that belt longer. Yeah, her, her her desire to evolve, her desire to be Mike Tyson, and end up like Fifty Tyson, is not. In <laughs> Looking like my dang yellow belts. Head movement, head movement. Actually, I'm not even gonna say that. That disrespected my yellow belts. Yeah, come on now. You see where my guys be moving? That's she a little dragon. Worse. He's a little dragon. No, I'm not gonna lie. Some of my little dragons, they be. <laughs> Maybe turn it over today. Working cross across. cross. I did one of these teaching. Okay. I look at the, the parents. Okay, For context, how old like, are the little dragons? 
We're talking three, you know, three to five, <laughs> three to six. We're talking, we're talking this. Little Olivia, she's like four years old. We're talking, wham, well, shoulder up. Yeah. Bang, turn the hook over. Hey. Chin down. Watch out now. You know what I'm saying? Her, her legs are straight the whole time, but, you know, I can't. Upstairs, so much. you know what I'm saying? We can only do so much at that age, you know? Yeah, right? You know? <laughs> but Rhonda, so, no excuse. Rhonda, no excuse. But then to say something is blasphemous, and people are going to agree with Shannon in, in our comment section, I'll say this. For the people that haven't got to this part yet and are already on their keyboards going, actually, we're going to see how many people <laughs> truly watch the sport of MMA and who are the uh, quote-unquote casuals. We're looking at Francis' face right now on this screenshot. Yeah. He's got the, He's like, I don't uh, know if you no. have the facilities for that, big man. I, I think that's yeah, the face you yeah. got right now because Connor yeah. is in no way one-dimensional at all. Bro. Let's run this back one time. My man, my man. The one thing about MMA, you can't be one dimensional. Why did he say it like that? (laughs) I know. He's like whispering to him like uh, an old head that that knows, which is crazy. Right, right, right. Like as if he's the MMA guy. Unbelievable. Ronda Rousey was one dimensional. Uh. (laughs) Conor McGregor's one dimensional. Because he was willing to let that first one slide. Now Francis is like, like, uh, look at those eyes, dude. He's like. uh, Really? Yeah, he just throw punches. (laughs) He has a good ground game, too. You can't Man, every time they take him to the ground, uh, uh, somebody will, will always have a be- There's always somebody that has a better ground game than somebody. And when they say you have a decent, decent ground game, it's not the best on the game, you know. <clears throat> it's a sport of uh, right, it was multi- multiple you disciplines. Know what I'm multiple yes. Generation. Yes. Okay. Uh, you, you have to be decent at some. Right. And most of the time, champion is not great at one uh, one thing or good at a lot just good at a lot you just need to be good at a lot yes shannon, then, that's what i'm saying i was gonna say shannon now taking it oh he's, he's like that's my point yep he's like yep 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 he's yep. like yeah now i'm learning you yeah yeah now we understand and he goes let me tell but you the a thing second is, <laughs> but the thing is he mentioned ronda rousey and Conor mcgregor who were <laughs> champions it's like saying, oh, yeah. you can't hop onto the point after you. you Francis is trying to tell you uh, those guys were actually decent at a lot of things. Yeah, the Good thing about Connor, things. he's like, well, they always put him on the ground. Well, yeah, you know, Connor's not the greatest grappler in the world, but when fighting the greatest grapplers in the world, those guys will supersede his grappling. Yes. Yeah, Khabib and Nate, but if you looked at how and he, he swept did, Nate, let's not forget. Right, and like how he did in the other fights against Chad Mendez, against guys like he got taken down, but great control on the ground. Yep. You know, Max Holloway does a great job on the ground. Even with Khabib. Even with Khabib, he had a, that first yeah. takedown defense, shoots the knee, yeah. essentially foregoing a takedown defense, like throws the knee yeah. to be like, all right, cool. Well, if you take, if you shoot, I'm going to hit you with this. And if I don't get it, then I'm kind of screwed here. Right. And still right, fights right. the takedown pretty well. Grabs the yeah. shorts, whatever. But still, fights it pretty well. Yeah. Besides uh, good at a lot, your fighting IQ make, make you even higher because sometimes you fight it you're fighting a wrestler you know that as soon as you guys get in the contact you, you can feel the clinch you can feel okay he is it, different this guy be wrestling for 20 years you're right you can uh, wrestle for three two three months in the training camp and come compete with somebody right. that be uh, eating wrestling for his entire life right. right so you just have to avoid to go to that territory mm-hmm. you know play with that but at the end, you might win the fight, but it doesn't mean you're a best wrestler. If they put you guys Talk. in the wrestling game, he will eat you. People like you <laughs> fight in one minute. <laughs> yeah, wrestling, because I'm going to get tired. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, hard, it's hard to avoid getting tired when you try to wrestle somebody. Yes. Because <laughs> yes, because you couldn't. <laughs> I love it, dude. It's like watching... Michael Scott in one of those sentences where he starts the sentence and has no idea where it is. It's like, it's, it's like what I'm watching right now. It's hilarious. But this is just a, a microcosm of an epidemic in, in sports crossover between, like I said, mainstream sports and MMA. Shane is not the first one. He's not the only one to do this, right? No, no. We're going to take a look at some other examples, but... What? Why is this the case? If if these sports are covered on a national brand, right? Like Shannon's doing it for Club Shay Shay, but he's also on this uh, Verge, I think, or something like that. It's volume. There it is, volume. I think it's Colin okay. Cowherd's thing. If you're going to have these guys, even Stephen A, interview guys, have them on the show, have them on First Take, have them on Undisputed, why not have someone like a Chael or like a Joe Rogan or like a... 
I don't know, name the person, a Paul Felder, a John Anik, a DC. Yeah, a guy from the, a guy from the game. Do that. Like, DC has a show on ESPN. Yeah. Why not just do that? Or or right. bring Stephen A. and DC onto first take to do something like that. Or, and, and again, yeah. this is the case with Shannon. I'm fine with Shannon interviewing, but have, like, you know what I'm saying, another guy there that can, like, talk yeah, that way. You can language. have an interview him, but it's, like, exa- it's not even... But don't, that, don't if, do if, that. Let's say Shannon is going to interview him. You have to c- come from the point that I'm the football guy. I do the other sports. Tell me what MMA a, is like. Right. That you, you, that this way, that Shannon can play the casual fan. He can play, you know, like I want to, I want you, Francis, to talk to the casual viewer who's not necessarily an MMA fan, who's a, a fan of just, just all, you know, non combat sports. Let's ask those questions instead of, let me tell you something. You can't be, you know, now he sounds like the guy freaking behind the TV. It does. And that's not what you, I see red. That's not what this you're is the, for. Yeah, this is the I, let me bang, bro. This is the I see red. This is like I train UFC, you know. And yeah, when you yeah. have it, I, to me, it's funny, but it also feels to me like they don't like people don't look at it as as the highest like a, a a professional sport almost, you know. When they take it this lax, not like again, Shannon's just doing an interview, but just the idea of sports commentators commentating on it like this without doing any research, and we're going to get another example here. Here's Skip Bayless. This is, a, this is a, a throwback, but just so the people know what we're talking about here. This is Skip Bayless talking about Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz before the uh, Floyd Mayweather and Conor boxing match. Well, 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 how did he start when Nate Diaz got him? Huh? How, the first fight against Nate Diaz. Speaking of Nate fighting Nate a Andrew. bigger man, a guy who outweighed him by, I'm going to guess, 40 pounds and had, what, five inches of reach on him and got him on the ground. It's called wrestling, sumo-style wrestling. Oh, no. Skip. What? <laughs> what are we talking about here? What is he talking about? We're just throwing numbers out, by the way, too. I weighed him by 40 pounds. and You're saying that Nate outweighed Connor by 40? By 40 pounds. Pinned him. Okay. He pinned him. Ohio- Sumo style wrestling. <laughs> and he just pinned him. He pinned him. Oh, how'd he get him on the ground? He so what him. they're talking about is when in the first Connor. Sumo wrestling, bro. <laughs> uh, even I know that. Come on. They're talking about the situation of the first Connor and, and Nate fight where Connor clearly gassed. By exuber like crazy amounts of energy and landed some great combinations in and the first round cracked. of the first fight. Got gassed, got cracked because Nate was still there. And they're like, oh shit. Yep. That 55 went on. That 55, or really at that time, that 45 left hand ain't, ain't working at 70, buddy. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and again, I think that's why Skip said 40 pounds, because Connor fought at 45, even though he's on the verge of death at 45. And then Connor gets so gassed, so overwhelmed, gets cracked, and goes, I'm going to shoot a takedown. <laughs> yep. <laughs> then Nate says, easy, Sprawl. Go ahead, give me that back, and now sink in the there choke, son. Sumo? What? But he pinned him. He pinned him. Sumo style. Sake. Some things on him first to knock him down. He didn't, and then he didn't jump knock him. him down. He got a hold of him and dragged him down. Yeah. See, this is MMA. I, was, I'm I'm was, infuriated, was, I'm infuriated. But Skip was Unk barking, I think <laughs> Shannon is barking him. a little bit. Oh, how did he get him on the ground? He put them fangs on him first to knock him down, he and then he didn't knock him down. He got a hold of him and dragged him down. Yeah. See, this is MMA fight. <laughs> yeah. UFC. Oh, I thought I heard him go. Right, right, right. Oh, drop that knowledge, Skip. Go you ahead. Two time MVP. Respect. We gotta okay, respect I don't you. Recall. Well, I I have one question. Here. Well, ask it, Skip. Well, well, why <laughs> why morning after morning? Do you sit up in your bed watching us talk about nothing? Could it be because you're addicted to watching us talk about nothing? No, no. Like so many That's viewers right. are? No, no, no. Yes, no, yes, I'm yes, addicted, yes, yes. I'm addicted to what are you going to say wrong next? Skip? Oh, <laughs> okay. That's what I'm addicted. You know, Skip, I've never Facts. Uh, so there's Skip talking about his uh, vast MMA knowledge. And we continue to run into these kind of things, man. Continually. Uh. And it's frustrating because I just don't see how MMA is on ESPN, not only in the form of the UFC, but in the PFL, yeah, is probably outside of the major four and in combat sports for ESPN, the biggest revenue generator, right? I don't think boxing is generating that kind of revenue for ESPN right now. Right, right, right. right, right. I'm, I'm sure that boxing as a whole in the grand sphere of the world is still probably more watched yep. 
in certain areas. But here in the U.S., it's the UFC, and it's clear. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Why do we not have people... Because it's not like they talk about it every day, right? No, yeah. You bring a guest on, you know? Bring a guest on once a month for the big pay-per-view, because let's be honest, right now, that's what they only cover outside of their specific ESPN MMA shows like that are on socials. <sighs> Bring someone in. Don't yeah. have, and again, this is on Fox at the time. We we'll skip talking to uh, Shannon, but don't have them sit there and say, "Oh, here goes the sumo wrestling expert Nate Diaz." Yeah, it looks it looks terrible. It looks terrible, and it sounds terrible. Because even if you're a, a casual fan, it's like doesn't even, you know what I'm saying? No, doesn't it even doesn't. Sound- it sounds off. It sounds you so out of touch. But again, MMA is new. Like bo- I feel like boxing is easier to if you're a casual fan to be like, oh, this is the bigger, taller guy. Like it's easier for you to like talk about styles mm-hmm. in boxing because he's just punching. So you're like, oh, this guy's a he's a stronger. He's more of a brawler. This guy's more of a boxer. Right. Right. And then this guy like that can cover so many fighters, and you cannot sound stupid. A hundred percent. You know. You can go. It's easier just kind of to fluff about styles and boxing, but if you do that in MMA, you're like, "This guy's a grappler." Well, he's the one-dimensional. He just throws punches, and you sound crazy because you don't know the vast skill sets that these guys have. Or you get most in, fans do. You get into this thing where they're like, "Oh, uh, he was rolling around on the ground," and you can like in certain sports, like right. in football, you can use a lot of like colloquial terms to describe right. because people understand it. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, a yeah. gunslinger. You know what I mean? People know what you mean when you say that. Right, right, right. He's a dog on defense. Or he was giving him the business. You can't yeah. say things like that in MMA. Because then you <laughs> out yourself for going, oh, you have no idea what's happening. Right, right, right. Well, how'd he get down on the ground? Well, yeah, he just drug him and, and he was and he pinned him down there. Yeah, and he was rolling yeah, around sumo, with him. Sumo pinned him when he choked him. Yeah. He, that, was, that was a submission. <laughs> You don't even pin in he sumo didn't, He didn't knock him down there. He just kind of went, went down and then sumo wrestled him. God, what, what? I love how he says sumo style, too. Like, like, like as if he knows what it means. Like, yeah, sumo style. No, bro. N- no one's ever said that once ever. Ever in, in any MMA sphere ever. I don't know what Skip was watching before that. But the problem continues as years and years are going by. We... Only have one thing to say, and I think it was adequately and accurately shut down by one of the greatest MMA fighters ever, Habib Nurmagomedov. At last week, mm-hmm. talking about you, sir, was that you really, really don't want to fight somebody like Conor McGregor again, primarily because you don't like him, and you think fighting him again gives him attention that you don't believe he deserves. How accurate is that? Right now, even I don't want to talk about this shit. Thank you, Mr. Habib Nurmagomedov. We appreciate your, your contribution to society, sir. Thank you. You know what my favorite part is? How Habib not once makes eye contact with the camera. <laughs> Where is he looking, bro? Just probably they probably have a monitor of Stephen A saying it, and he's probably looking at Stephen A and not into the camera lens, bro. Because go back to the beginning, this man is looking at something. Talking about you, sir, was that oh, you there? really, there? really? He gives it a couple of stares there, but essentially, okay, okay. this is this is exactly what I'm talking about, right? You're having a guy like these, Stephen A yeah. try to talk to the fighter and and implant a message because this is right before Habib is going to fight Justin Gaethje. And yeah. Stephen A is trying to do the Stephen A thing, right? And and the and to be fair, the sports personality thing to drum up some interest for this fight, but because right. they don't know who Justin Gaethje is or why they should talk about him, they just revert yeah. it back to Conor McGregor because that's who they know. Yeah. So that's he's the, he kind of like trying does to that. do the press conference thing where they're trying to force guys to talk, right. but that's not your job. You're not the promoter. Nope. You know what I'm saying? In in terms of sports, you're supposed to gather information and. and you know, hype up the fight, his accolades. Hype up the done, fight. You know, right. The fight, exactly. Not a, a perspective fight that has already happened in that case. But that's just the, oh. the in, in so many, in so few words, Habib, just the disconnect between the two. I We had to talk about it today because I just saw that from Shannon. And 
I'm, I'm, I'm maybe, you know what I'm saying, tooting my own horn a little bit here, but if they need a guy, Sensei. I know. I was just going to say, I'm like, you would do 10 times better than If this. they need a guy, I just want to be Sumo on the debate style. desk and just hit, you know, hit Stephen A with them just <clears throat> back to back with those. You know what I'm saying? Just to, just to be able to learn a little bit, you know? Not like that, you weirdo. <laughs> just saying, like, punches, crazy. punches. People was, can't see crazy. the punch. That's what I hit, punchline, son. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, one of them. <laughs> Counter, uh, one of them. You know what I mean? That's what I want. I want to be able to, to nice. be in these conversations or just have someone. Like I said, a DC or a Dominic Cruz, by the way. Like, yeah. whether you're a fan of Dominic Cruz's commentary or not, when he's on those analyst desks, he is... Hilarious. One hundred percent, especially with analysts, because then it's just, uh, just it's a it problem, a, a disservice. Because Francis has gotten the baddest man on the planet, and you have him, some guy, you have Shannon Sharp, who's our guy, guy who's, we love, who's not an MMA guy, being like, you know, let me tell you, yeah, it's like this is the baddest man on the planet. You're not, that's right. not what you're supposed to be doing. No, and you wouldn't do you know? that as like imagine Max Kellerman doing that to Floyd, right? They even, the boxing guy wouldn't do that. Exactly. The, the the MMA guy wouldn't do that. Exactly. And that's the, that's the problem because like not only are you saying something that's like not even in tune, you're like going, you're like stepping over a line. It's even worse. You don't even know it. <laughs> and Francis you know I mean? is is showing it to him in real time. But again, it's not that we love Uncle Shay Shay. We love him. no. He's the best. He's the best I'll man ever. I watch his stuff every day. But. It's just a lack of understanding as to what you're actually doing versus what you're trying to do with that interview. You're trying to elevate Francis. You're trying to give him a spotlight. And fair play, I'm sure it'll do that. Club Shay Shay got a crazy number on YouTube. But in actuality, what you're doing is showing you guys don't care enough about the sport to actually do research on it and or have yeah. some sort of plan as to how you highlight them versus going, hold on, let me just do what <laughs> Bro, I do <laughs> with other sports. Imagine they have DC come on. And like talk to LeBron, be like, "Yo, like you know what? You know what basketball is all about." Listen, let me tell you something. You know, you gotta be able. You, you gotta do this. This is the this is the the move in the game. I'll make like, you go left. I'll make you go left. <laughs> you can't right, use your, right. you can't use your left hand. I'll make you go left. I'm going right here, and you can't LeBron stop that. Say something. DC's like, "That's yeah, what I'm saying. saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying." Like, yeah. no, it's not what you were saying at all. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not a good look. Not it's not look. a great look, man. And listen, all I'm asking for is for ESPN. The worldwide leader, that's their name. Step it up. Step it up and take the sport. Step your game up. That is the worldwide leader in combat sports right now. As seriously yep. as you take the big four. Because it is growing and you're going to have to get some competent people on there to talk about it sooner or later. Because we're already seeing through the cracks. So I'll be handing in my resume next week. Comment section, let me know, let us know what you think about these sports commentators that... Quite frankly, I have no idea what combat sports is or how to talk about it, talking about it, and what should we do to fix it? Because we don't have those answers, but we'll find out. I can't take no loss. I don't even know what it costs. I hit the ground and I go 